You know, I've, I've ridden work for many trainers back in the day and they were all good trainers, And um, but I never really got a chance to see what what they were actually doing because you know, get on that horse and you go, off you go and you ride. And um, and now I haven't been riding, obviously I'm 48 years old, And um, but anyway. It's a glorious, glorious winter's day here in the province of KwaZulu-Natal and Andrew Harrison, myself and Garth Nosworthy are sitting here in the Sommerfeld Clubhouse enjoying the view, enjoying the breakfast. I don't know about enjoying your company because you're a bit grumpy this morning. Yeah, well I got here so early. Everybody tells me I must get here early and then I get here early and there's no one here. So is that really something to get grumpy about? Yeah, it's pretty painful but I've got things to do. Things to do? Okay, well that's fair enough. So. Let me put this bowl of milk in front of you here, this jug of milk, because you're behaving like a cat this morning. <gasps> so I'll leave that for you. Thank you. <laughs> Can you believe it? Okay, you've had a haircut. Yes, I was forced to have a haircut. So is that also maybe one of the reasons for it's your probably grumpiness? probably the last time I'm ever going to have a ha haircut. Why? <laughs> it's a waste of time and money. Okay. Oh, so when I retire... Uh, You're going to just become, just become a hillbilly. Your wife's already retired, hasn't she? Yeah, I know, but she's she's German. She's German. <laughs> okay, so you've got a retired goth, a retired <laughs> German wife. Okay. So that's Andrew's, uh, and he's going to be retired in a couple of months' time too. So he says he's going to have more bushy hair. I think he's going to have no hair. Well, they say if you go for a haircut, it's 50 rand for a haircut and 30 rand for a shave. So just tell him to shave it off. So you say 20 well, just, just leave it. You don't have to shave or do anything. Um, <coughs> Speak up, you're through. Let's talk about uh, a bit of uh, feedback or call it what you like. But first of all, just to let you all know, as you know by now, we've got Garth Nosworthy, who's from uh, That's Racing. Yes. Garth, welcome and thank you thank for your you time. Thank you very much for inviting me to the show. I've been watching this podcast for quite a while now and... Um, feel quite overwhelmed to be here so thanks for the invite no, lovely nice to have meeting you. andrew harrison for the first time i know yeah. can, you, can, can you believe you've it see, you've seen him you know you've heard of him yeah. you've seen him in the newspapers and now you've met the old goat i mean you've met the man 30 years in racing and we've never crossed paths and no. met each other you know it's, it's weird, eh? quite yeah. quite crazy because but, um, he, he only stays in ashburton for us to get him to summerfield yeah. we're going to twitch him to get okay. here okay um before we go into the news section we just want to clarify one or two things. Uh, there was some feedback, and we take feedback. We know we appreciate feedback. I just want to get the record straight on a few things. Last week's podcast, you were not here. You were out in the game reserve fetching your daughter. A long drive, so you had, took two days to get there and back. I did the podcast on my own with Jared Samuels. A brilliant podcast. A brilliant interview. He was so informative. His life story is unbelievable. And... We, we, we wanted to go to Ashburton because that's where Jared is based. It flooded with rain. It was pouring with rain. There was a howling wind. It was ice cold. And the normal uh, venue where we sit out on the deck, well, we, would, we couldn't use it. So we had to go into the summer, into the Ashburton Clubhouse, which is not operational during the day. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. They only open at that. Oh, no, lunchtime. Okay, so it was a little bit of a shoddy... Uh, environment because the place was a little jumbled and they were getting set up so it was, certainly wasn't by desire so that shouldn't happen again we normally at this glorious clubhouse here at Sommerfeld or at other stables or at other venues mm. but please rest assured that we will go out of our way to ensure that the environment that we bring to you is always of top quality that was just a once-off so unfair mm. to be judged on that once-off occasion you happy with no, it that? happens it happens yeah and uh, these microphones I'm told are high quality, very expensive podcast recording microphones. You'll correct. know a bit about that. Is correct. that correct? Correct. Okay, so... That's what podcasters use. That's what podcasters yeah. use. So they're different to TV mics, they're different to singers mics. These are hmm. Dinkum podcaster mics. Absolutely. Happy with all that? I wouldn't know. Okay, I wouldn't know either, <laughs> but if I'm told they're right, they're right. We will strive to do our best for you at all times. News. Could you get the phone and let's talk about the news and then we're going to uh, 
find out a little bit more about Garth and, and all about that's racing. Uh, it's about minus 50 oh, rand, yeah. eh? <laughs> no, Stuck it on silent and then it's still you carried on. Uh, yeah, you asked for lunch for that one. I'm only joking. We've just had a lovely breakfast. <laughs> okay, okay well, talk about the news. The point news one. Is, okay, the, the big thing is a uh, gold challenge was, um, on Saturday. The gold challenge meeting is sponsored by Hollywood. Uh, they just put out a nice flash race card, which I, I, you can write on. I believe that uh, there was... So it shows you how every business, every person, every everything... You, you come across issues, you know, yeah. you, you make mistakes or you, you, you have problems. And, and I believe that there was an issue with uh, these guys. Uh, I think something happened with their printing. I wouldn't be surprised if it had to do with load shedding. I mean, do you know how many light bulbs at home? Yeah. Especially for my elderly mom. She said, rings me up. She says, please, can you come and change the light bulb on the veranda? You go and change it. Three days later, she says, the light bulb's gone. Because with all the load shedding, they just oh, pop. Okay. They pop yes. one after yes. the other. So... It's problems with the computers as well. You can switch your computer off five minutes before the hour, just about every hour, because you don't know what time load shedding is going to be. They I've say two to four, and it actually ten to twelve. Twelve, yeah. yeah. You know, I've got the worst thing. Every time the lights come back on, the alarm goes off. <laughs> I assume it. Okay, for, so but two also, o'clock in the morning, not fun. Uh, we, I had a meeting. My wife and I had a meeting with our insurance broker to sort out some adjustments in our policies, and he was telling us you cannot believe. The amount of claims they're getting on laptops. Correct. And, and, they will and, be. And, and they, they will, will be. be. And, and uh, uh, house, uh, uh, you know, DSTVs Correct. and all those things because yeah. they just can't take the power surges. Absolutely. And I didn't think of that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think of that, you yeah. know. So um, tell me something. Is this a racing podcast or is it? Listen here. Uh, <laughs> Ali, you, you know, I, 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 you see <laughs> what I'm saying? off track here. Does not matter? Where are the rules? Where are the rules and regulations that say we have to keep on track? This is our show and we can do what we like. Okay. So there we go. Anyway, back on track then, seeing that Grumpy's really getting grumpy. Um, Gold challenge. Yes. Gold challenge. There were, well, the point I was trying to make, your yes. miserable git, was that there was a delay in printing. Okay. However, the delay and the wait was worth it because Hollywood Bets and Winning Form have produced a fantastic publication here for their race day. All glossy pages. Get yourself a copy. It looks top rate. quality, that. It, it really is really top gossip. quality. And they've really, they seem to gossip have got some advertising news. as well. Andrew, yeah. DSTV, Rising Sun. Uh, really, the, the Punters Challenge. Yes. They've got some. It's a really great book. 25 Rand, it's a steal. Get well yourself done. a copy. Well Next, after the Gold Challenge. Oh, let me switch on the phone. Uh, Luke Ferrari is going to Hong Kong. Uh, it's, I think it was, it's, it was on the cards. It was on the cards. And... Mm. Good luck to him. He's a talented rider, and and to, to and he's got the right attitude. I he's like. He's got him. the right attitude. We all like him. His CV already, yeah, the Mets, incredible. Uh, all the Group Ones, Malmo's Triple uh, Crown. He's he's got a CV. No, already. he's not a Frankie Dettori. He's a sort of flamboyant and outgoing sort of like he's got his head screwed on straight. And he, well, and just his ride right on Rainbow Bridge in the J and B Met. Uh, I'm sorry, I still call it the J and B Met. The Met. Um, I mean, that's not traditionally. It's not the easiest horse. To, to ride, you no, know. I no. mean, last year they, who was it? They got Ryan Moore to ride the horse. The time before yeah, they yeah. was Ryan Moore. I think it was yeah, yeah. World class jockey to, to come and ride that horse. A year later, we've got Luke yeah. Ferraris who wins on the on the horse. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's not the easiest horse to ride, and yeah. I Hong think Kong. that alone on a CV will do Poof. him good. He's got just, yeah, just that one ride alone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not to mention all the rest. Yeah. So well done. But yeah, and, and Hong Kong, uh, they're gonna they're gonna gain a good good quality rider. Talking about good quality riders, yesterday I watched, uh, uh, you laugh yesterday, <laughs> I'm, see, I'm going off the beaten track again, mm. yesterday, mm. was it yesterday, I'm sure it was yesterday, my blood pressure tablets had run out, so obviously with working from home, what do you call it, not free, um, ro uh, what do you call it uh, when you work uh, remotely? Uh, so you know, you know yeah, free, no, you work remotely, sometimes mm. you work from the office, sometimes okay. you're at home, sometimes you're in your car on the top of the mountain, Correct. anyway, yesterday I was at home working as you know. But I thought, damn it, my blood pressure pills have run out. I banged on my slops, my shorts, and an old t-shirt. I looked like I'd just come off the beach, never mind from behind the desk at home. I go to the chemist. I say, please can I have my blood pressure tablets, and I get a tap on my shoulder. I turn around, who's it? I don't know who. None other than the CEO of Gold Circle, Michelle Nair. <laughs> he come for his blood pressure tablets, too. <laughs> he had come for his blood pressure tablets and some pain tablets. The poor bugger had fallen off the ladder. Oh, but um, so I said to him, I'm not bunking, don't worry. But anyway, 
I'm f- I forget what the point of the of the what, what we were talking oh, I don't about. Know what it was. Uh, we were talking about uh, Luke Ferraris going. Oh yes, and I was watching some Hong Kong racing uh, yesterday at home. Carice Teton, I think, had at that point won four out of. He had five rides. He had won four races. Mm. I'd watched him ride two particular wins. I haven't seen riding like that in a long time. He is seriously talented. No, mm. he is. He, he always was when he was here. Yeah, yeah. He is, he's a good lad too. So, which, which another top appeal. Yeah. Another top South African jockey that's just not in South Africa anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Next. Next. Uh, what have we got? Ryan Munger. First Ryan Munger, first group one. Calvin Habib. Another group one. First timer. Cape Town Noir. Stallion. There were three, first, three grade yeah. one debutants or three first time group one winners well, on yeah. last Saturday. Cape yeah. Town Noir, well done to him. Ryan Munger and, and Calvin Habib, two likable riders, yes. likable humans. Correct. And uh, what's the last uh, one with NHA? Got, uh, NHA have joined forces with uh, um, memorandum of understanding with the rural racing blokes okay. uh, to try and bring them up to scratch and, and yeah, we just try and get together and, and, and help each other out. I bumped into Sean Veal this morning at the track. He is uh, taking a little bit of a suspension. That's why he's not riding this weekend. Uh, so he is on a little bit of a suspension. Before we move over to uh, Goth, because the show is about Goth, that was another criticism that came about uh, not criticism, and call it constructive criticism. Then, is that you know the show is all about the guest, which it is, but in fact it's actually wrong. The show is not all about the guest. We've got segments. It's mostly about. Yes. It's mostly about the guest. There's segments. There's news. There's tips. There's the interview with the guest. So it's not only about the guest. Um, and and we hosts. You know, I'm the main host. You're the co-host. Hosts talk. Is that right? But if I can help it, yeah. They are. So that's the point I'm trying to make. So on that note, let's go across and, and, and talk to Garth. And, and the question I ask everybody, and I will keep asking, because people say, well, how did Tawanda get involved in horse racing? How did Warren, how did it all start? How did Andrew? Mm. We want to know how Garth Nasworthy heard about this beautiful sport, horse racing, and when was it? Sure. Um, okay, so basically for me it started, I, I don't come from a horse racing family. Um, but I was 10 years old and just out of the blue in the pool area one morning my mom says to me God would you like to take horse riding lessons start horse riding and like instantly I said wow that sounds like a good idea you know um, and I said yes and um, I'll never forget the very first time I mounted up on a swung my leg over a horse for the first time a little Pasuji pony at a riding school hopped on but as I sat in that saddle Something happened to me, and I knew straight away that I found myself that this is going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life, you know, in one way or another. Um, I was relatively small, I was in standard three or grade five, um, and I just felt like I had so much control, so much, but someone's actually going to teach me how to ride this animal, and it became addictive. Um, and then just, you know, the natural progression learning how to ride horses um, you don't see much horses on tv you know the, the, the most i could see horses on tv was horse racing so i thought oh well you know i like horses i like riding let me watch a bit of horse racing and my original opinion of horse racing wasn't good you know all i saw as a 10 year old was the jockeys coming into the straight and i saw the sticks flying and i thought no man you know, i don't want to do that that looks cruel to me you know and um obviously knowing nothing about horse racing at all but the interest developed you know and um, riding horses I, I started becoming an accomplished rider and it's an expensive sport you know and my parents raising four kids sending us to school and clothing and stuff like that you know it, it, it wasn't easy for me to progress and go into show jumping and get it. It's just too expensive. I'm glad you missed show jumping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed show jumping. and um, But I, I discovered I enjoyed going fast on a horse. You know, when we go on outrides, you get to cant and you get to gallop. And then um, how I got into horse racing. Well, we go forward a few years. Um, 1987, 31st of May, I was in a head-on collision. Ended up in hospital. And um, I always say there's always something good that comes out of a bad event, you know. And in hospital, I bumped into, well, 
in the bed next to me was a chap by the name of Andrew Pappas. And mm. we got chatting. So you had a bad grounding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, we, as always, we got in, into talking about horses and horse racing. You know, anyone who had a conversation with me, the conversation always went into horse racing. And he said to me, you know, Goth, why don't you give my brother a call? He's just started training Michael Pappas. Can I stop you for a second? Yeah. Michael Pappas, you know. He was at school mm. with me, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, he had just started training, so yeah. it was a long time ago. It was a long time. I'm trying, well, the accident was in 87. I was 14 then. And um, it took a couple of years before I could start riding again. You know, at first the doctors were saying that, you know, you might not be able to ride again. Um, but was just a couple of broken legs and they're going to heal. So I was about 16 and I gave Michael a call, went up to his farm for about two weeks. Um, he said, no problem, come and ride work. And I'll never forget the very first horse he put me on. It's a horse called Calamity Fair. Now this horse had raced on the Monday. If you remember, you know the first race meeting at Gravel for the years, the Flamboyant Stakes? Yes. Do we still have the Flamboyant Stakes? Yes, yep. yes. Okay. Yeah. This horse had raced on the Monday in the Flamboyant Stakes. Ronald Singh rode the horse, Ronnie Singh, and apparently it had pulled him in the race, and um, he battled to hold the horse, and still ran a credible race, we finished midfield, if I remember correctly, about seven lengths off the winner, anyway, that was on the Monday, um, I get to Michael, I meet Michael Pappas at Scottsville on the, on the Wednesday races, go up to his farm, Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, it's my first time I'm going to ever ride a racehorse on a racetrack. Now, I've never been taught how to ride a racehorse or ride work. I've ridden horses before. I didn't realize I, I have to learn how to ride a racehorse or ride work. You just shorten your stirrups and you ride. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, he puts me on this horse Calamity Fair. But what he doesn't tell me is that when I get on this horse, it's the first time this horse has come out the box since coming back from the races on Monday. Eesh, this was nice and fresh, was it? So now it's nice and fresh. I get down onto the track. Horse is cantering. But I thought, that's fine while it's cantering. I'm going to shorten my stirrups, you know. But this canter, I don't know what happened between the canter and the gallop. But before you know it, I've got one stirrup that's short. And the next one is long. And this horse is now taken off with me. So I thought, okay, while the horse is taking off, let me get my other stirrup up quickly. Got myself short into my, my jockey seat. This is all, it was all about riding in the jockey seat, you yeah. know, the riding work. And um, I thought, now I can get the horse back. Let me just slow him down. That wasn't going to happen. It absolutely wasn't going to happen. It was a runaway, was it? You know, where the same comes from, the horse is bolted. Yeah. I experienced that. The, very, you know, the difference between riding a racehorse on a racetrack or on a track as soon as that horse puts his hooves on their track, what a go. it becomes a different beast. If you see horses when they come onto the track from the racetrack, they, as soon as they get onto the track, you see the jockey's now starting to have a hard time. Those hooves hit the grass, he knows this is where the business happens, you know? And it, it's a different beast. So he didn't you know? tell you to shorten your irons before you got onto the track? No, he didn't <laughs> tell me the horse hadn't been ridden since the Monday. And, but you know something? It was an experience I'll never forget. Um, just looking down, you see those shoulders, the, the hooves coming out in a split second, um, the power. I, I, I think people don't, a lot of people don't understand the raw power of, a, of in particular, a racehorse. You know, you'll often hear someone say, well, you know, I could have ridden that horse better, or, you know, what, what's so difficult about being a jockey? Um, they, they see it as, you know, they just got their toes in the stirrups and they're standing on top of the horse and the horse is doing all the work. But um, when I start explaining to people that ask me that question, that you've got to remember, you're riding an animal that's over half a ton. It's muscle power, and it's bred and trained for one reason only, and that's to gallop. Well, I'm telling you something now. A, a, a jockey is probably the fittest sportsman on it. I don't care if you rugby, <coughs> cricket, or any, Absolutely. even uh, water polo, athletics, or whatever. Absolutely. You cannot get fitter than a jockey. And the most underrated. I want you to repeat that again because you, you've just said that these animals are bred to do what? They, they, okay, first of all, a thoroughbred is scientifically bred. That's what thoroughbred means. It's a man-made breed for one reason only. To, to race. gallop. 
to run. Okay, that's, that's the point I wanted to get across. And when it puts his hooves on that track, on the grass or the sand, it knows that this is a track. Whether it's a race track, a training track, the horse knows straight away. That's why they get so excited. They're just getting the horse onto the track, going through the chute. They, they do stupid things. They can do somersaults or stand still. Or it can be the most difficult part of the ride is just getting them on because they're so excited. They, they're jumping out the skin, literally. And I, was, I wanted to make that point because I overheard somebody saying the other day, look at these poor animals, you know, they're running their hearts out. Not poor animals, they love it. They're bred they to do it. Giving, that, giving it that them, is well, that's what they, what they what the want to do, is what they're bred to do. When you get on that horse, you know, often you'll hear someone say, oh, that horse ran a bad race. And I, yeah, when you look at the form and the numbers, yes, the horse ran a bad race. But what you don't understand is that that animal on that track that day is feeling a bit... He's not galloping himself, his yeah. heart out. Whether he's not himself or not, he's giving it everything that he's got. He's going the fastest he possibly can. Yeah. What can only make it go faster is finding out, you know, was the horse a bit lame or, you know, whatever the situation was. I could make was. them go much slower. Have 10 rand on them. Have 10 rand on them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Garth, then let's, uh, uh, um, and I'm glad you mentioned that because there, there's, there's breeding, you know. You, everything's bred for some, you know, not, not everything, but most things are bred for. You go into the kitchen, and, you know, okay, well, you don't breed chefs, but you train chefs. Yeah. You know, you go into the kitchen and put a whole lot of ingredients in front of a chef and put yeah. them in front of that. What's he going to do? He's going to start baking you a cake or cooking you a curry. No. He's not going to watch the, do watch what the he's news. Supposed to do, Correct. Yeah. Okay. Let's fast forward a bit now. Let's yeah. go to this company or this brand. Brand. Uh, brand. Okay. Let's go to this brand that you formed called That's Racing. Correct. What is That's Racing? Well, first of all, the name That's Racing is um, me and my mates, we'd always watch racing and, you know, go home and oh, it was a bad day, that's racing, you know, or you watch a good finish and now that's racing, you know. Um, so we always kind of liked the name and thought we'd do something with it. Um, and then the whole reason, I think, if I'm honest, why I started That's Racing, the original reason, um, I'm... As many people know, I'm very good friends with uh, Gareth Vanzell and the family, you know. And I've just had the privilege and the pleasure of watching this man at work. You know, I've, I've ridden work for many trainers back in the day and they were all good trainers. And um, But I never really got a chance to see what what they were actually doing because you can get on that horse and you go, off you go and you ride. And, um, and now I haven't been riding, obviously I'm 48 years old. And um, But anyway... Just watching how Gareth works, the dedication that he puts in, I realized that being a racehorse trainer is, you know, you don't just wake up in the morning and say, you know something, I think I want to train racehorses. You know, it's um, the dedication and the commitment, how he knows his horses. Um, I've often said if, if, if I ever came back as a racehorse, I'd want Gareth to look after me, you know. Um, but... That, and I thought, let me, if I can do something, I've got the equipment, I've got the camera equipment, I've got video equipment, the tripods and everything that I've been buying over the years. And uh, if I could just put that to some use to put this man on the map internationally and try and get an international clientele, yeah. clientele going, yeah, you know. Um, you know, Gareth being the humble man, he is, he says, you know, God, I don't want it to be all about me. You know, he, he's very competitive and, you know, he's... You know, Gareth, Gareth, you know, he didn't want too much limelight on him, and I, and, I, and I get that. And so now we have this opportunity that we can even approach other trainers or other people and say, listen, I've, I've built this platform, we've just got to, on Sunday, I'm very proud of it, you know, we've got to 10,000 members in less than two years. Um, and a lot just, of people. The, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a bit. So the way, and, and it's not just South African, you know, I've especially targeted racing people in America, Australia, UK, all over the world. So if you look on the group, you'll find a lot of people that are making comments or liking. If you just tap on their profile, you'll see they're not all from South Africa. Yeah, yeah. And um, what, what I'm also enjoying about the group is that there's a lot of camaraderie going on. Um, yes, you're going to have the odd arguments or two going on. And I get a few requests to, to, to delete this post or, or to delete that post. But And sometimes I do, but I've got to look at it holistically and say, you know, if there's a bit of an argument going on here, I've got to let it continue as long as they're not... As long as it's become abusive, yeah. As long as they're not swearing each other. And um, from what I've seen, there's been good banter, good debate, but nothing worth um, 
deleting or banning right, him, right. About, you know. But you know, if anyone on the group is really unhappy with something, we'll take a serious look at it, and you know, we'll deal with anything seriously. But right. the whole idea is to get people to communicate, talk horse racing, um, get to know people from overseas. Uh, I, I, I've met a, a chap overseas, Greg Watson. Never met him in real life. I've never shook his hand, but he's become as close a friend to me as friends that I've had for 30 years. Yeah. You know, just through Facebook, just through the group and connecting because of horse racing. And um, the whole idea is, you know, we've created a platform for people to use to their benefit. It's, it's, it's not really about me. What do you, you actually know? do on that platform? What, what, uh, I, must, I must admit, I haven't looked. That, that, that's fine. Look um, well, look, well, what I actually do, I, I've been growing it. So it's not really organic at 10,000. I've physically put in the hours during COVID. Um, I was working, I, I work Facebook. I don't go on Facebook. I like to say I work Facebook. I, I get it to grow. Um, then once I've, now I've got 10,000 people, I think my idea now is to try and get it to start growing organically. Right. Sure. The show obviously helps a lot, you know, I, I appreciate being... What do you actually put on, on, on the... On yeah, what is the content, guys? Now, what yeah, is the, your content? The, the content, um, so now I'm getting back into Facebook. Uh, my account was recently deleted, so I've lost a lot of content in terms of context. Um, so I have to build myself up. But I'll see people posting their winners on, you know, your, your wife's taking a photo. And they're sharing them on the winner. I share them and I just promote and say, you know... The rest of the world, this is South African horse race. And if I see an interesting article, then you've got the punters that have their little section and they communicate with, with each other. Um, the Sporting Post, Gold Circle Post. Um, but now we're going into another gear. With that's racing, we got our videography doing, doing making videos. Going, I have to say thank you to Gold Circle. I'm so grateful for the support that I've been getting from everybody in racing you know it's actually quite overwhelming you know um we've got to understand and, and, and we've got to make it very clear that anything positive that yeah. and, you know you might get some negative criticism which you work on but yes. generally anything positive to get racing to work you know if you say you want to come to the races and i don't know stand there and offer a service to mox punters cards or whatever just to make yeah. uh, owners and racing a better experience if we've got to look at it and yeah. you now with the videography have started something we've got some fin uh, around the country we've got yeah. some world-class photographers yes. so the photographic uh, moments are captured the social media the moments are captured yes now you want to start doing something which is very interesting for an owner yes uh, and for anybody if a jockey yes. asks you Absolutely. or a breeder asks you or, if I ask, or anybody asks you you're starting to do the video clips yes which uh, when you tell me what you're charging you know I, 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 it's, it's a very reasonable rate so it's affordable for most yes and andrew so you know as an owner i know now with my filly that's running next week uh jimmy Pud. And <laughs> you just said you're going to put 10 rounds. It's all about the one. That's why I want to stop it. No. <laughs> so she's running next week for her last time, and then she's going off to the breeding paddocks. I've got lovely photos of her, but I haven't got some video yes. material. So I'm going to ask Garth, you know, if you will do it for me. And, and it's a three or four minute clip yes. that you can play on your TV yeah. at home, show your mates. But you tell us more about the service which i think is a brilliant service well that's where we're going forward you know um i'm very grateful and very lucky that you know my girlfriend um she she picked up a camera for the first time coming out of COVID, and her progress i mean the footage that she's putting out now and and this girl's still learning but and she's dedicated to 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 the task and um the footage that um, she's putting out in the editing and, and I'm just so excited because I still see ourselves as like a two-year-old, still learning the game. We, 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 I don't like to think of ourselves as professional at this stage because we've still got a lot to learn. You go to the races, you're taking all this footage, you're going home and now you've got the stress of how did this footage come out, you know? Are we going to use it? And you know, So we're still at that stage. but. When I look at the three videos that we've produced so far, the race day videos, the first one we did with Bay Breeze having its first run for the Bayer Racing um, Club, um, came fourth. Then um, we did She's a Keeper winning the, the 1900 at Hollywood Bets Gravel. That was awesome. It was 
brilliant for us because she won the race and now gets into the July handicap for Gareth. So that was very exciting. Um, and then the last video we did was a little bit naughty, running the first race for International Racing Club, I yes, think it was. Yes, yes, yes. Um, also another exciting... So um, you, you actually take commissions? Um, you're talking about I mean, orders and orders, yeah, yeah. No, not yes, money yes, commissions. Yes, so, so we're now at a stage where you know people can approach us and say, you know, I've got my horse running, and um, you'd like if you've seen our videos and you'd like a video like that, we can do that. Yeah. But you know, going further than that, not just race day, you know, um, many trainers will have shares available in their horses, and that's really why this started is to create more ownership for trainers so that. Yeah, trainers can it's have more horses. It's a bit of a, a so, so, public service for So well, instead for of trainer. taking a photo of your horse and posting it on my site to say, I've got shares on this horse, let us come and make a video and speak on the video and tell us who the horse is and tell us the breeding and, 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 and let's do something more visual and we can do that for you as well. Yeah. And that's where we, you know, the, the, the future of the internet and, and the biggest market on internet is actually through videography, podcasting, YouTubing. Garth, um, do you find that uh, um, people, I suppose everyone's different, so you can't answer for everyone, but, and also is it, do you find people are happy to watch a, a podcast that's half an hour, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, or do you, you know, like, the, I, I'm different. I mm. like to watch little videos, marketing videos for yes. two or three minutes. But yes. I personally will sit for two hours and watch a podcast. Correct. Everyone's different. How do you see it? You know, that, that, that's actually a very good question. And it's something that's been going on in my head for a long time. Trying to ascertain as to how long can we make a video. And one thing I'm learning about the internet and Facebook and social media is consistency. So whatever it is you're doing, now your podcast is around about 40 minutes a time, okay? Now, in the beginning, you might find you have less viewers, but every week you're posting a podcast. Six and a half thousand when I last checked on the podcast with uh, Jared Samuels, and you weren't even here. Yeah, if well, you were well, here, we would have had 12 and a half thousand. Yeah, but Jared's popular, you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, th I think the main thing is consistency. And eventually people, they see it all the time and, you know, maybe last week they didn't feel like watching last week's episode. And the week before they didn't and maybe this week, you know, who's got knows where so they won't watch this one, you know, I don't know. Um, but eventually, all it takes is to watch one, the full 40 minutes, and then you're going to watch next week's one, the full 40 minutes again. And then you get that basically, that clientele. Obviously, the more popular videos are your one minute, two minute, three minute videos because of people's attention span. Yes. But that is Facebook. Yes. Okay. I think the whole idea is use Facebook for your longer videos like this. Use Facebook to grow YouTube, to promote YouTube. YouTube, you'll get a viewer that will sit and watch a video for 10, 15, 20 minutes, 40 minutes because you're going on to youtube to watch what you like whereas you go onto facebook to see what's happening, what's around, happening yeah. you know and while you're looking to see what's happening is the person going to dedicate 40 minutes of their time while they're still browsing yeah, um, yeah. So, so i think the, the way forward for your longer videos um would be youtube but it's hard to grow youtube it's easier to grow facebook yeah so you, you, you sort of one complements the other correct, correct. what i want to ask tawanda to do for us is um uh, speak up you through is Garth has touched on these lovely race videos that you've seen that I don't know if you've worked with him or going to work with him but oh yes some exciting news coming up between me and Tawanda um, th this is a good man yeah no, he and is a very very um, good man thank you are you talking about Tawanda Tawanda <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, because what I'd like you to do at the end of this segment and I'm talking about segments, and you'll see as the podcast goes on, we're going to be having individual segments with their own slides and everything, uh, which you don't know about yet because we haven't had a meeting yet. Um, You're having it now. I'd like you to see if you can just feed in that She's a Keeper video so that the people can see what we're talking about. And oh, see what uh, see thank what you, you very much. You know, that any prospective owner that wants to have something done like that for their horse, uh, they can, you know, can get that. So we would we'll ask you to just slide that in at the end of the show or after the segment, because uh, we're going to end the segment now shortly with Garth. Maybe you can put it in now. 
But before we end, yes, no, no, we're not. Uh, sorry, we're not, not ending. ending no, yet. no, we're not ending yet. We're not ending um, yet. Uh, um, I want to know for you before you hand over whatever you're going to hand over to us. I want to know from you what are your future plans now? What do you want to do? What is Garth and Renee? It's your lady's name is Renee. Renee, correct. You, Garth, Renee, and that's racing. What are the future plans? What can we expect? Um, to just carry on doing what we've been doing now, to keep growing um, and to get better at making videos, to get our name out there, um, and just to be a friend of horse racing. That's my ultimate goal. I want to be a friend of horse racing, a friend of the people. I don't just love horse racing. I love the people of horse racing. I love the horses. And um, why shouldn't I? When I, everyone that I've met has just been so overwhelmingly friendly. I mean, you've reached out to me. I've been reached out to so, you know, so many people that have contacted me and said, Garth, I like what you're doing and keep up the good work. and. You know, it, it, it motivates me. I, yes. I actually haven't had one bad comment to me about about that racing that that bothers me. I can't yeah. think of anything. So I'm overwhelmed by that. You must and, be doing something right because and, you make one mistake and you usually get to ask. Yeah, look, you know, we, <laughs> there are a couple of you know comments that aren't too nice, but uh, yeah, nothing that's bothered me. But yeah. I'm I'm just overwhelmed by how people have just been so nice. Yeah, and take it from where it comes. I think you know. Yeah. The dogs are beautiful dogs at Summerfeld. Yeah, we're going to see dogs at Summerfeld. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so those are the future plans. Well, Garth, we're not ending the show yet, but yeah, thank you for, for your love and your passion of racing. I've and got something people. to hand over to you. You know, I put these caps on my site that um, Garth Lloyd knows where he got hacked and deleted. it. Anyway, we start again, but I put these on mainly just to show off Renee's product photography. Okay. Um, and people very seldom make comments. They just hit the like button. And without me even advertising or doing anything, I've got a whole bunch of people and private messages saying, where can I buy one? Now, these aren't for sale as yet because we are going forward. But I've brought... Okay, Tawanda. Yeah, please come forward. You're in trouble now. Please come forward. you got the smaller one. That's for you, my man. Thanks, <laughs> red and... For you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, got there we go. Extra large because he's got the biggest mouth. No, they're, they're, they're all large. It's just the one that got the smaller Small, one. Small, yeah. It's, um, not, it's, 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 uh, I've got a big head, not, not from an, uh, from an arrogance point of view, just because <laughs> I'm a big chap. Yeah. I'm f uh, far from arrogant, man. Be nice. But God, so, thank so, you so very so much. Yeah. Sure. Going forward, that, that, this is another opportunity for us. We'd like to, you know, it's expensive um, to do an online shop. There but it is. We got branding, and we'd like to. Well, maybe what we, maybe yeah, for those that quite popular, you know, absolutely people have asked me, you know, where can I get one? Can I get one? Or how much are they? Um, so we're going to look into it. Um, there we go. I'm going to show everybody. Look at these stunning caps. That's racing. It's uh, neutral, if I can call it, in yes, the sense it, that it's it, not advertising a particular trainer. It's the no, it's the brand. It's, that's racing. For me, it's a brand for horse racing. So if yeah, you like the if, if you're or a, South Africa, it's if, a horse racing. If you're a brand. cap fundi and yeah. you like caps like I do, you know I've got two hundred and thirty caps at home. Two hundred thirty-one. Not a tea leaf. Not two thirty-one now. Uh, well there are these gorgeous caps made different sizes: small, medium, large, extra large, whatever you want. Uh, Follow Garth on his page. The page is called? Okay. The, um, the group is That's Racing SA. The page That's Racing was linked to my personal Facebook account. So sadly, I've lost that. I've recreated myself on or reintroduced myself to Facebook as a page. Garth Lloyd Nosworthy. So you can follow me on Garth Lloyd Nosworthy. And at this stage, I think my name as the page will take the place of That's Racing as the page. Okay. And then we still have the group's. That's Racing SA, That's Racing USA, That's Racing UK, and I also have the group called the Kentucky Derby. Jeez, Can man. you believe the Kentucky Derby, that name was available? Jeez, no, yes. oh, so I took it. What you do um, is, yeah, if you, get it, back to it. <laughs> <laughs> if you get presented with something, uh, you take it. And now, we let you know, send Garth a message if you want to have a video taken of your horse or of yes, please, we'd love something, to. you know, contact him. If you want to purchase these caps, contact him. Uh, but I think start off by inboxing him on Facebook and then 
once you guys and girls have made connection, you can swap cell phone numbers. We don't want to put cell phone numbers out on public platforms. So, yeah, yeah the page Garth, is Garth Lloyd Nosworthy. Simple. Garth Lloyd Nosworthy. It was my Facebook name, my full name. So we've got the pages the same. Okay. Well, again, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you very much, Garth, for your thank time, you for your much. effort. As I said, you'll be getting a call from me in the next two weeks, I think, because oh, we've got a filly I'm looking forward called Marsan that's going to run, and she is having her last run, and we're sending awesome. her off to stud, and I would love some footage of her. So. Awesome. Number 10, she's a keeper. Well-named individual. She's the fairest sex, taking on the boys, the gimme the green light. She's the unknown potential. She's shown glimpses of top ability and centered mistress ran a decent race earlier on. This is gonna be the, the game changer for She's a Keeper. Warren Kennedy, 50 kilograms. She's done everything they've asked of her. And in her favor, she started as a four-year-old. So she's got a lot of improvement to come. And let's see today if she can rumble with the boys. But she's a keeper over the last hundred. Chavut's wearing a down mat on on the inside. But while she's good, she's a keeper one at. Mat on second, Chavut third, Crown Towers, and then trip to Africa. Well done, mate. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Cheers, thanks. Let's talk uh, tips. Let's talk tips quickly because we've got a top quality race day come uh, Saturday at Hollywood Bets Gradle. And uh, have you come prepared? I've come prepared. Okay, let's go. The first race. The first race is at 10 to 12, 11.50. It's the Amazulu Community Trust Maiden Plate for fillies and mares over 1,600 meters. For me, although number five, Diamond Girl, looks to set the standard, I have healthy respect for number four, Templehof. I think uh, she's going to improve to run an absolute cracker. Yeah, I think those are, are two big runners there. And Indigo Moon, um, I don't know. She's had too many chances. She's had too and many she's chances. Drawn 14, but you never know. She's had too many chances, uh, but she's going to win one of these days. Yeah. But I'll give her more of a place chance than a winning one. From 14, it could be tricky. The second race, Andrew, is the La Liga merit rated 90 handicap. It's over 1,400 meters. I'm fairly bullish on horse number three, Quick Star, whose uh, statistics over the distance are phenomenal. Is that MJ's horse? Yep. Yeah. The stable's coming right now. It is, I and I bumped into him the other day. He tells me the horses are turning, they're coming good. Absolutely. I did some work for him at uh, Scotchville on Monday. Okay. Um, took eight horses up there for a gallop with um, I met Ray, um, Rachel Vinica for okay. the first time. What She's a lovely papers. young girl. And, um, and uh, Nicholas Patel. Yes. Met him for the first time. And, you know, just uh, the way they work together, you know, they, you can just see they, they, they get stuck in we were at the stables and loading up the car and you don't have to tell them to do anything. I'm talking about Rachel and Nicholas. Yes. They just got stuck in and they knew what to do. Um, and with MJ, he's a legend. He's the master. Yeah, and he, um, he, he says the horses are coming right now. So... Yeah, so there so we it's go. A, it's Quick a stable start. to follow. Stable to follow. And talk, just one thing we did forget in the news department is Rachel Venick is having her first ride on Wednesday. Has that been approved? Yes, yes. She, said she, got, she said she got three nice rides too. So, yes, so that, the, ah, well, there well done, Rachel. Two other gentlemen uh, that have signed. Donald, Donald Humby. I mean, Donald Getson. Getson. <laughs> I've met him. What a pleasant young boy he is. Very nice. And the other one? And, uh, Kiratile. Kachedi. So we'll look out for these new young riders. Yes. I didn't realize Kiratila 
Kachidi. Who was the son of, of Al J. Kachidi. Al J. Kachidi. Yeah, the late Al J. Kachidi. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 A fine young man and a top rider was Al J. And we hope that these young riders have very, very fruitful careers. Right. I'll Absolutely. Race two, I think it's a hard race. Okay, so I'm going to tip uh, Garth and I'll tip Quick Star, Quick Star. MJ's horse. Just for MJ. You find I'm it Ralph the Rascal. Okay, Ralph the Rascal. Is that who you tipped in the race card? Yeah, boy. Third race is the Lighthouse Foundation Devon Air Stakes, a listed event over 1,400 meters. Again, I'm big on horse number six, Captain's Run. But Maluka in the race is number seven, Kingsmead Crystal, whom I think will be right there. Yeah, I've gone captain's run too. I mean, she's been running in feature races. Uh, yeah, behind Sheila and Sound of Warning. So, yeah, I think that's the right one there. But tricky, but I think she's the right one. Even a horse like Miss Putin has got to have a quartet yes, place chance. that's for sure. Okay, let's move on to the fourth race, the Cell C Sharks, a gate crash of stakes, a listed event over 1,400 metres, and it was wonderful to see the Sharks rugby team enjoying their breakfast right here at this clubhouse. Oh, and nice. Yeah, yesterday they were, they've named a horse after them. Uh, black white dynamite yeah and uh, lovely to see the sharks getting involved in horse Absolutely. racing as well the more Absolutely. we can get involved the better Owen's a shoot boy eh? once you get those blacks involved and then people say well okay, the sharks have got a, got a horse maybe we can get one too yeah. top businessman and a top company fourth race gate crash of stakes here's a difficult race Andrew and I say that because conquer the enemy number one and two incredible are maidens but they're really impressed in their debut runs Cosmic Highway, I've got no doubt, uh, will have tightened up from that last run. Uh, and Cosmic Highway is my firm first choice. Uh, party time is fancy, rated with tons of ability. And Imlenze Yoko de Duma, horse number nine, can improve to go close. I find this very hard, but I'm in the camp of Dean Kanemaya's horse. Uh, I'm, I'm Cosmic Highway, party time. Party time won by six beating Incredible. So. Uh, I don't think there'll be any turning the tables there. AJ's captain, I think, is quite, quite highly regarded. But I think Cosmic Highway is the right one there. The fifth race is the Hollywood Bets Dolphin Cup. So let me start that again. Can yeah. I start that again? Yeah, you better. Hollywood Bets Dolphins Cup Trial. It's a grade three event over 1,800 meters. A difficult race. I'll probably end up putting the field in my pick six. But I have to give a first choice, and that's going the way of Tree Tumbo. Yeah, I think Sean Terry's quite uh, keen to get, get him into the July, so he'll need to, to win here to to get a gate there. I've gone for a sneaker. I've gone for African Night Sky. Uh, he's come down from 120 rating down to, to what's it 107. now? 107. Uh, there must be a reason that was the, that horse is still racing. I mean, yeah, it's, they keep on. it's been yeah. 1,099 days since African Night Sky's last seen the winner's enclosure. Yeah. But he, he's in training. He's obviously loving obviously it. Obviously loving he's it, yes. It, oh, last, it was a good run last time behind the stable companion. Mm. I think if he comes back to his best form, he'll eat this field. Sixth race on the program is the East Coast Radio Tibushina Stakes, a Group 3 event over 1,400 metres. The horse that sets the standard is probably number five, Wisteria Walk. But that's not my first choice, uh, Bossy. My first choice is horse number 10, Free State Star. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's coming, last, coming well for, for, for Dennis. But I think this is a tough race. I would put in as many as you can. Because okay. I think Favorita is also in there, Wisteria Walk and Wiley Winch. The seventh race is the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge, a Group 1 event over 1,600 metres for the gross stake prize of 1 million South African rands. Uh, 1 million South African rands. And yes, we have to respect the three-year-olds. No doubt about that. But the three-year-olds are going to have to be very good, very, very good to beat number three, Rainbow Bridge. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Jet Talk fancies him. He goes against him now after that Queen's Plate win. Uh, that was a strange sort of a race, that. Uh, but Rainbow Bridge, I think, was warming up mainly for the Mets, so he may have been a short of a gallop or two. So mm. yeah, I think you'll turn the tables. So you're tipping Jet... Uh, who, who's your I've gone Rainbow Bridge. Gone Rainbow yeah. Bridge from, mm. Jet Dock from Jet Dock. And then Seeking and the Stars. Seeking so the stars. Yeah, I've gone pretty much the same way. I've gone Rainbow Bridge and then the two three olds. Let me make it very clear. I'm not saying the three-year-olds can't win. Yes, they are very good. One's the Queen's Plate winner, Seeking the Stars has got solid four. They can win. You have to pick up their feet to be Drama that's Bridge. The point, that's the point Bridge I'm trying to make. This is just a warm-up gallop for the July. Yeah. You know? so, so, uh, that's, so it that's doesn't have to be fully fit. 
correct. It doesn't have to be fully fit to win this race over 1,600. It's 1,600, eh? Uh, yes. Yes. yes yeah. that, that's a well spotted yeah. goal. That's the point I'm making. The three-year-olds yeah. are good, but they're going to have to pick up their feet. Absolutely. Yeah, by the way, Rainbow Bridge won the, won the draw. Was Correct. Better. That yeah. was, I haven't yeah. seen Absolutely. a performance like that for yeah. a long time. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. but yes, Jet Dog has won the Met, and uh, not the Met, the Queen's Plate, and, and he's beaten Rainbow Bridge. So we're in for a thriller. The eighth race is at four o'clock. It's the Rising Sun Durban Dash, a non black type event over 1,100 meters. For me, Spider's Corner sets the, sets the standard. Yeah, it's interesting to see that uh, all the Hollywood horses, I, mean, I think the, the, whole, the whole string is out. <laughs> I think they've got runners in just about every race. I think they've got, I think I think they've got eight runners best. on the day. Yeah, I think this is their, their best chance of a win. Spider's corner. So no arguments there for you and me? No, I've got one sneaker there. Captain Opie. Captain Opie, okay. Captain Opie, his best course in distance. I think you can ignore that last run behind Spider's corner. I think you'll finish a lot, lot closer. Okay, the ninth race, ninth and final race is at 25 to 5. It's the Super Sport Maiden Plate. Now, I thought this was a very shallow race in the sense that there's not too much form to talk about. Who have you tipped to win it? I've gone, don't touch me. Okay, I won't. No, good. <laughs> <laughs> First run for Duncan. Uh, I've been squeezing a bit of work. Yes. He doesn't say anything, but I just watched. And uh, working <laughs> well. He's worked very well. Okay, well, there we go. That's horse number 13, don't touch me for the last race at Hollywood Bets Gravel on the turf on Saturday. Goth, will you be there? This Saturday, have you... I'm, I'm looking at being there. Okay. Um, I just need to make a confirmation and hopefully I'll be there, yes. Okay, well, that'll be wonderful. Now, Absolutely. let's just sort out our desk because you can see what's going on here. Before we wrap up, there's a couple of things that we want to touch on quickly. Uh, that's been sorted. Yes, Chevrolet Stud, Bloodstock, South Africa. Lovely to see Alistair Gordon at the Summerfeld Clubhouse. Alistair's been at... Well, he's not a trainer anymore, but he's been training. Well, you'll remember yes, him. Yes, Alistair Gordon. Him. So this clubhouse is like a second home to him. Yeah, it was actually the first time I've seen Ali in about 18 months. So and he, and yeah. he's doing a sterling job for Bloodstock South Africa, and he came and dropped off these catalogues here. It's the Chevrolet Stud Farm Sale on the 16th of June 2021, should you want to get yourself a copy of these catalogues. You can come to the Summerfeld Clubhouse or Hollywood Bets Gravel or just get hold of the Bloodstock South Africa company, and I think they'll also be online. Okay. And if they want to get hold of me as well and we can do something for them, we'd be happy to help. There we go. You know, so we've yeah. got the platform. All the platforms. And Andrew? Warren? Please. Have, I, have, I, have I warmed you up a bit? Your mood is a bit better. You're happy. Come on, carry on. Let's go. Um, our sponsors, we're launching with them. Um, I think in two Thursdays' time. We're just waiting to finalize a couple of things. Uh, needing to get the uniform in, we need to get the kit, the caps, the whole, the slides, the artwork, everything. Uh, and they're a company called Megatech. What do they do? <laughs> they are um, solar panel. They 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 they, they do. Uh, now you see, you put me. Uh, it's solar panels. <laughs> no. It's so uh, cryptocurrency. It's cryptocurrency and solar panels. And and no. I've been given the exact definition of what they are, how they are. We're going to have them on the show. But it's to do with cryptocurrency and solar panels. That's what I'm going to say because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Okay, well, they're in the right business with ESCOM going down this morning. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I rest my case. So we'll launch with them, I think, in two or three Thursdays' time. We look forward to them. We thank them for their support, Megatech. Go and Google Megatech and see what it's all about. I'll do that too. Um, and it's also nice that, it, that you can invest in Megatech from as little as five rand. I'm just using a figure. Five, ten, two rand to billions of rand. So if you've got a spare 500, you want to invest with them, it's a great concept. Go and Google it. Um, and then the other segment that we're going to start uh, is the, the where are they now? Who are they now? Where are they now segment? All the old people, and you know, the other day I used the word old and I got reprimanded. Well, you know, if you're 89, you're not young, are you? Uh, so the old people of horse racing, the the people that we don't see anymore, where are they? What are they doing? I'll who's tell you who's back in town. Who's back in town? Vince Curtis. Well, that's the first name that came to mind. Vince Curtis. Where mm. is he? What is he doing? Mm. Oh, he's back from Cape Town. He's moved into Waterfall or, or Cliff or somewhere around here. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. So he's still in the area. Let's see. We will see you later. Vince Curtis. So there's a list of people. There's Absolutely. Reese Van Fake. There's all the people of racing. Where are they now? 
So that's the next segment, and we'll do some preparation for that as well. But uh, all that's left is to wish you all the very best. To thank Garth once again. Thank you very much for inviting me and having me here. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Andrew. Yeah. Anything um, you need or we can help you, please, you're most welcome. Very humbled and overwhelmed to have been invited here. I'm not a officially a racing person. No, you definitely are. You give yourself okay. some more credit. You give okay. yourself some more credit. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you definitely are a racing person and we want to see more of you and you're most welcome on the show at any Thank time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate to it. To our viewers and our supporters, thanks for your support and uh, always remember, be nice. If you've got something that you'd like to put forward to us, please message us. Please send us suggestions. You know, this, this, the show is already quite long and is already quite segmented. Uh, tell us mm. what you want to see more of, but we can't have a show that's three hours long with 47 different segments. Mm. So, uh, but please comment, like, and uh, be in touch with us. We had to make your racing experience as pleasurable as possible Absolutely. in this world. And Terry Fripp walks past and taps me on the arm every single podcast <laughs> at Thursday <laughs> on a Thursday at 25 to 11. <laughs> From all of us at the Horses to Follow podcast, Gold Circle, and just racing in South Africa, we wish you all the very best. Punt safely and we will punt well and be safe. And we'll see you as always in the number one box.